Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Hannele Lindqvist Krause. I am leading the potato and sweet potato breeding at the International Potato Center. Uh, I'm based in the SIP headquarters in, in Lima. Um, today, I'm presenting some of the, the changes that we have made toward modernizing SIP uh, potato breeding. Uh, this work has, of course, been a, a big team effort of the entire potato breeding team, but I would like to mention two, uh, two names. So Mokhtar Kante, who is responsible for molecular breeding, and uh, Bert de Buck, who is responsible for statistics and uh, data management. So as um, any breeding program, our aim is to use the technologies to accelerate the breeding process and at the same time we are trying to maintain as low cost as possible. Uh, potato has several really important diseases that are constraining the yield and uh, particularly these are important for smallholder farmers in low input farming systems. Most uh, disease resistance phenotyping assays are expensive because they are very labor intensive. And one a good example of such phenotyping is uh, uh, potato leaf roll virus disease. That is, a, it is a phloem limited virus spread by aphids. And that means that for inoculation, one has to keep these aphids and use them to infect the plant and often one also needs to do grafting. So you can imagine that the cost of such an assay is very high. Um, in fact, we once made a calculation that showed um, around 80% cost saving if we use a molecular marker as compared to the PLRE bioassay. So we had already existing in-house developed marker assays, that were either gel-based or high-resolution melting-based. And these are all very good, but they were not routinely used by the breeders. And also these kind of marker systems are really not um, very uh, user-friendly if you need to process thousands of samples. Um, also because potato is a very important crop, globally and a lot of research is going on. So there were custom design, designed potato arrays available with up to 20,000 markers, but this had a relatively high cost. And that also means that they cannot be used for routine uh, um, screening of samples. We could also use GBS, so genotyping by sequencing, and um, this can be cost effective if one is willing to accept for low sequencing depth. But um, bioinformatics effort is, that is needed for such a work is really uh, very high, and we do we do not have access to such um, such talent. All right, so the solution. To this kind of problem is, of course, easy to use outsourced high throughput marker systems that have um, a fast turnaround time. So in the um, low density setting, we are using CASP markers, where we are using uh, marker assisted selection for traits like disease resistance. And in the current setup that is available uh, uh, for us, the user can select up to 10 markers based on their needs. And we have also developed a set of markers for quality control that currently consists of 20 markers. And from these CASP markers, uh, the results, we can identify the five different genotype possibilities for a biallelic SNP that is um, uh, in tetraploids, the potato is a tetraploid. So on the mid-density side, um, we have selected among these existing global potato markers, a set of over 2000 um, markers and converted them into the DART tag format. Uh, these markers cover all 12 potato chromosomes and the density is around three markers in each uh, one centimorgan. And similar to the cusp markers, uh, we can also obtain the allele dosage information of these markers for tetraploids. 
So in both of these marker systems, what we do is we sample either tuber or leaf tissue on 96 well plates. We dry them using a lyophilizer and send for the to the genotyping service provider who does the DNA extraction and genotyping and then results uh, returns the results to us in less than two weeks. So the results, once we get them, they require minimum bioinformatic effort. And all this means that the results are available for the breeder to, to take decisions on time before the next um, planting season. So we can ask, what is the impact of this new technology? Um, on this graph, you can see the description of the, the typical breeding cycle that we had in the past. Um, because we did the, the general combining ability trials at, after the candidate variety selection, the breeding cycle until new crosses was really long and it took over, over seven years. So this can of course be improved already without including markers, but if we include the markers, we can uh, make the process even, uh, even faster. So the best stage for genotyping seems to be for us um, after the second year of visual selection, uh, when we have around um, 3,000 uh, genotypes um, individuals left uh, to genotype. So we can use the trade markers in the CUSP system that are available from Intertech um, to keep only the disease resistant individuals. Or if we are running a genomic selection, we can use the mid-density markers from DART uh, for genomic prediction um, um, to, to make more accurate estimates toward the variety development. And we can also do genomic selection to select the, the parents for the next breeding cycle. Um, for the population improvement. So like this, we have really uh, shortened the breeding cycle um, in a very significant way. So how did all this happen? It, it all started in 2016 when SIP was invited to take part of the high throughput genotyping project that was for uh, CG centers and that was led by ICRISAT. In this project, we converted the markers that were available at that time into the CUSP system and validated them. So these were the trait markers. So then in uh, 2019, 2020, with the EIB module three, we developed the mid-density marker panel uh, for the DART tag with the support from uh, Jeff Endelman from Wisconsin University. And then we also developed a set of QC CUSP markers. Um, in 2021, again with EIB, uh, module two, we developed the breeding scheme for genomic selection. And we have started to input marker data to potato base. So potato base is one of the breed bases that um, are hosted by Boyce Thompson Institute at Cornell. And, uh, uh, all the RTV crops are using this, uh, this database system. And also with module five, um, we have participated in the breeding informatics network activities um, where we are talking about many of the aspects of marker usage and, um, and what kind of tools we can have for, for bioinformatic tools for better use of these systems. So some of the really critical points that were pushing us forward are things like support from, uh, from management, because this is really a big change for the breeding program. And this was also something that was always very much emphasized in the high throughput genotyping project. And in 2019, thanks to the also support from management, we got some new key staff that really helped us to move things ahead. And then of course, finally, what made all this possible is the EIB and the high throughput genotyping project support. Um, lessons uh, for others. 
um, teamwork is really important for success. So the, the molecular team in isolation doesn't have very much value because the markers, they have to be useful for the breeders and the breeders need to trust the methods. So one way of doing this um, is to, to include in the, in the molecular breeding group budget some free genotyping for the, for the breeders. So this way they can test test in their materials and see the value of the markers. And it's also very important to have clear roles and responsibilities for the team. For example, a simple question like, um, who is going to do the sampling really uh, requires a lot of coordination. Um, operations. Um, so. Yes, sampling strategy needs to be in place and uh, good protocols have to be in place. And if, if the team is uh, multilingual, there have to be, of course, in many languages. SOPs are also very important and these have to be well communicated to everybody and available. We also sometimes make short videos on the methods and then this can also be very helpful for the technical team. Um, so when we started to get this data we did not yet have the uh, potato waste functional and so for to automate the result interpretation it's good to have some scripts in R that you can just plug in once the results are coming in and then everything is ready uh, more, more quickly. Um, data management. So anyone who is doing large scale genotyping of thousands of samples really needs to have a database. It's pretty uh, hard work to work uh, to work on just one PC or or separate PCs for everyone and um, have the files in Excel. Still, it's really important to be very organized with all the files that are coming and going. And there is also uh, some level of self-discipline required to stick to the consistent sample names and, and trial place, uh, I mean, trial names. All right, what's next for us? Um, so we are striving to have a potato base fully operational with uh, genotypic data. And we would like to have the, the data from the vendors to go directly into potato base and also to be able to generate order forms from potato base. We still need to uh, define what is the best timing in the breeding process to, for the ver hybrid verification with these uh, quality control markers. Um, we are also working with module three for genome assembly to develop better markers because the currently available potato markers um, were developed using North American gene pool. And we also would like to add all the trade and QC markers in the mid-density mid marker set. All right, so here we have some resources. So the first uh, one is a paper that we have recently published, actually just last week in agronomy, where you can read more about the CASP markers. And the, the mid-density genotyping set is available uh, in the uh, Excellence in Breeding Toolbox, and, and so is the, um, the low-density CASP um, marker system. And I would like to end by thanking our partners and donors who have made this work possible and thank you for your attention.